Hi, welcome back to Open Edgeware Learn and Teach. I am Rajiv and this is video 3 of our course series Introduction to Microcontroller Programming. And in this video, we will continue to have a peek inside a microcontroller to see what it looks from inside. In the last video, we saw how a microcontroller contains thousands and thousands of transistors which can combine together to form a hardware that can perform different logical functions, functions like AND, OR, NOT, NAND and so on, or functions which can count time or event. Transistors can also combine together to form memory which can store data and retrieve it when asked for. We also saw how a program inside a microcontroller is responsible for giving instructions to the hardware over what to do and in what order. This was a pretty low level abstraction for microcontroller. In this video, we are going to see a higher level of abstraction in a microcontroller to see what is inside it. At a higher level of abstraction, I would like you to visualize a microcontroller as a small office with one employee and one boss. Let's call this office the mu C office. Now this employee has been given this job on the basis of a contract. I'm going to read you a part of this contract between the boss and his employee. So this is the mu C office contract between the employee and the boss. And the first contract term reads, the employee is expected to do n different types of jobs or instructions. So in this Musi office, there are n different types of jobs or instructions that can be given by the boss and the employee is expected to do all of them. The second term of the Musi office contract reads that each job must be started and finished within the time specified. So there is a time limit associated with each job in Musi office and the employee must follow this time limit strictly. So example, let's say there is a job of type 1 and the time limit associated with it to finish it is 10 minutes. The employee cannot take 11 minutes to finish it. The employee has to finish this in 10 minutes. The third term of the office contract reads that each day the boss can give any number of instructions to the employee up to a certain maximum and the employee has to follow it from the start to the finish in order unless otherwise interrupted by the boss. So every day a boss can give an instruction list to the employee and the employee has to follow it from the first instruction to the last instruction in order unless interrupted by the boss in between. The fourth term reads that the employee can only communicate to the outside world through specified channels and while following certain protocols. So there are few channels of communication in MUSI office and the employee can only communicate through these channels and the employee should also follow certain protocols, certain standards while communicating to the outside world. For example, uh, uh, when it starts a communication, uh, it may start with uh, hello, welcome to MUSI office and then it has to say what it wants to say and then the employee has to finish the conversation with uh, something like thank you for talking with us. So this is a certain protocol that the MUSI office employee should follow. The fifth term reads that the employee is expected to maintain a register in which he updates the status of certain works done by him. So the employee is expected to have a register in which he enters the status of his work and the boss can periodically view this register and modify it to suit his own needs. The sixth term says that the employee shall work as long as there is power in the MUC office and when the power comes back he has to start work from the beginning again. So as long as there is power in the MUC room the employee has to keep working and if there is a power down and when the power comes back again, he has to start working back from the first instruction again. 
The seventh term of the Musi office contract reads that the employee shall receive no salary nor should he ask for it. You know this is a pretty harsh contract for an employee who is doing his job. And this boss is very strict and he expects his employee to do whatever he instructs him to do and whatever is in the contract. The employee has no choice and he has to do what is being asked him to do in order to keep up the job. I'm sure you must have figured out by now that the employee in this Musi office is CPU which is responsible for following all the instructions given by the boss and the boss is really the program which gives instructions to the CPU on what to do. Now in this Musi office there are certain components, certain peripherals that help the CPU complete his job according to the contract. For example, there is a clock hanging on the wall which helps the CPU complete his jobs on the time specified. This clock in the microcontroller world is called a timer and it keeps count of the time. Now, now normally a CPU executes all the instructions the program gives in sequence from start to finish. However, the program can call the CPU and ask him to interrupt this sequence of instruction and follow some other instruction instead. This call to interrupt a sequence of instructions is called an interrupt. CPU can communicate with the outside world through certain channels. One such channel is called input-output port. Data can come in or out of this channel. There are other communication channels in this Musi office which follow certain other communication protocols. Now this CPU doesn't have a very good memory so it keeps its data temporarily in a place called RAM. So within this RAM the CPU also maintains a register in which it keeps updating the status of its work that the boss program can view and modify. Now this Musi office receives power from external source and as long as there is power in the Musi office the CPU has to continuously keep working. Whenever there is a power down and the power comes back CPU has to start working right from the beginning to the end. The boss program itself sp stays in a space which is called room. Microcontroller is very similar in its features to the Musi office that we saw just now. In a microcontroller the program is stored in a memory space called ROM. The program can send instructions to the CPU and the CPU has to follow it from start to finish in sequence. To help the CPU perform these instructions in the time specified there are timers in the microcontroller. There are also interrupts through which the program can stop the flow of instructions, the sequence of instructions uh, performed by CPU and can ask it to perform certain other instructions instead. There are input output ports in the microcontroller through which it can take data from the outside world and can send data to the outside world. There is a memory space in, this, in the microcontroller which is called RAM. RAM stores some data by CPU temporarily. It also has a special register which the CPU maintains to show the status of its work. There are also some other communication channels within the microcontroller through which it communicates to the outside world on certain protocols. There is also a power supply that helps the microcontroller run and perform its functions. There are different types of microcontrollers 
but most of them have these components or peripherals we just learned. The purpose of this video was to help you understand these peripherals or components inside a microcontroller at a higher abstraction level. In the next video, we will look at a special kind of microcontroller called 8051 and see how these components or peripherals measure up in 8051. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.